So today we're gonna to discuss the pros and cons of becoming a nurse practitioner. What's up, it's your favorite NPHP and welcome back to my channel. Last video we discussed nurse practitioners being the number one ranked job to have. We talked about the data, the statistics behind that. But at the end of the day, we do have to discuss the pros and cons of you know, becoming a nurse practitioner. So we're gonna get started um, with discussing the cons of becoming a nurse practitioner because we wanna leave this video with the positivity, with the pros of becoming a nurse practitioner because at the end of the day, I want everyone to become a nurse practitioner. So the first con is lengthy educational path. So in order for you to become a nurse practitioner, you do have to have your bachelor's of nursing and that usually is a four year degree. And then when you decide to become a nurse practitioner, it's an additional two years of a master's program. It depends on your previous career path. So if you became like an LPN first, and then you went back to get your bachelor's, then you're gonna go back to get your master's. So those individuals will have a longer time in school. I went and got my bachelor's right away, and then additional two years. I don't think schooling is that bad, again, compared to doctors. And at the end of the day, we are doing the same thing as doctors. So the second con is continuing to work while you're in NP school. Some some schools are pretty hard, pretty rigorous, and will not allow time for you to work because the time that you are working should be the time you're studying, you know, to pass your classes. I was able to work full time in school. I did save up a lot of PTO and I used it wisely. If I have a clinical that week or a test coming up, I will try to use my PTO. So you do have to consider that. So the third one is you do have to complete a certification exam after your schooling. So after you did all your hard work in school, pass your tests and exams, you do have one big last exam is the national certification exam. And we have two that you could choose from, but um, this can make or break you. I know several struggled with passing, exam passing the exam and it, it could take some people three to four times to pass the exam. I was blessed enough to pass on the first time taking the exam. And I mean, it is stressful. It is the studying for the exam is time consuming. You do have to pass the certification exam to be able to practice. So the fourth one is variability of working hours. And I feel like this could go both ways as a pro and a con. I guess you just have to know going in what you want and what's going to work out for you. Some people who work outpatient at clinics work nine to five and feel like that better suits them. Versus myself, I work in the hospital setting. I work three 12 hour shifts at night from 7P to 7A and I feel like that works best for me. I'm actually going on 12 years working this schedule. You just have to know going in what is going to best work out for you. And when you're looking at posted jobs, it should tell you the working hours. And at the same time, during your interview, you need to discuss if there's a possibility of switching your hours or working four 10 hour shifts shifts versus three twelves. You just got to know going in what best fits you, your lifestyle, if you have kids or not, if you're planning to have kids and just what is what matters most to you being off during the holidays or not being off during the holidays or making sure your weekends are available. The fifth one, working conditions. It could be hectic. It could be hazardous. So healthcare in general, we're not just talking about nurse practitioners, bedside nurses, doctors. We are all exposed to hazardous working environment. And for example, I was exposed just this past Past year twice with TB. I admitted a person coming in with knee pain. I noticed he started coughing. That was one of my problems, his cough. You know, order my chest x-ray, order the respiratory piano just to start it off. But yes, he was diagnosed with TB. So I was exposed and thankfully I did have my mask on. He wasn't coughing in my direction, but I was still exposed. Every day we are exposed to different illnesses, respiratory illnesses, bloodborne disease, everything in the hospital setting. Yes, know that you are highly exposed. Um, when it comes to working in healthcare in general, as a nurse practitioner, being a provider and being the first one to see these patients in clinic or in the hospital setting, that is something you do have to worry about. We have our precautions. You're washing your hands, wearing your gloves. And I actually still to this day wear a mask. I do not walk in my hospital without a mask. I am protecting myself still. So the sixth one is workplace stress. And at the end of the day, every job is stressful. There's different ways to manage your stress and there's different ways to try to decrease your stress. In my work environment, I work with five doctors during the night shift 
If I'm overwhelmed and just stressed with the amount of work I'm, I'm dealing with at that moment, I communicate to them like, hey, I'm not able to help with that, that next admission or, hey, I need help. We have to speak up when we are overwhelmed and feel stressed. Every job has its own type of stress. And I just feel like you have to know how to deal with it in the moment and how to decrease it to prevent burnout, which leads me to number seven, which is emotional stress. We're taking care of very sick patients. They're very, very sick. And like I mentioned before in my previous video, I know that I personally can't care for kids either. My emotional stress will probably be on 100 every shift that I work if I'm caring for kids. So I feel like this is something you, you need to know going in. And I know at the same time, I cannot work in like a fast paced emergency room. It's just too fast paced. There's a lot of things going on at once. It's just a lot for me to handle. And I know that. So that's why I don't work in an emergency room. That's why I'm not caring for get kids. So, But at the same time, I do experience some emotional stress, but it's emotional stress that I'm able to manage. I am, I'm able to handle in a way. I'm able to, if it's me just leaving work and you know, venting and talking to my friends that are also in healthcare or talking to my mom and just, you know, getting it off my chest or at the same time, just talking to the Lord and just praying and asking for the strength just to get through it all. So number eight, we're talking about legal responsibilities. You know, the liability, liability, liability. It comes with it. I feel like liability or legal responsibilities come with it every career at the end of the day. As nurse practitioners, we are diagnosing now, we're treating, we're prescribing medication. So we have to know exactly what we're doing, but we have the resources, we have the tools. We have to know when to reach out, when to pull out, pull out that book, when to use up to date, you know, when to pull up those research articles. Number nine is inconsistencies with your scope of practice. Depending on the state you work in and depending on the clinic or the office setting you work in, or depending on where you work in general, different hospital settings, your scope of practice might differ just based on that facility. Some states you may be able to practice more independently versus some states you need a supervising physician. I need a supervising physician, which I'm okay with having a supervising physician. It's mostly when I admit patients to the hospital, they go over my H&P, making sure I'm covering everything. Going back to legal responsibilities and be, just being liable, having a doctor just go over and making sure I covered all the bases. I'm, I have them on the correct antibiotics, have the correct um, imaging and testing ordered. I just feel like that helps with the legal responsibilities, having a doctor overlook my work. I have no shame in my game. They have a lot more education under their belt than I do. Yes, I'm seven years in, but I just feel like that also gives me the comfort having a supervising physician that works with me. And you just got to know that some settings, you might not have the autonomy that you're striving for if you want to be you know, more independent and not have a supervising physician. You might look at more states that, you know, allow you to practice more independently. But again, you do have to know and ask those questions in the interview process. So the last one, number 10, is repaying your student loans. That's for everyone who went back for any type of schooling, your bachelor's, your master's, your doctorate, you're gonna have student loans. If you're blessed to have paid out of pocket, God bless you. <laughs> but I have a lot of student loans. I am not ashamed of it. After graduating with my master's, I was stressing over it. I mean, stressing. But I accepted that I will always be paying for my student loan. I accepted it and it's fine. I personally feel that way. If you do not like having debt and want to pay it off, you figure out a way to pay it off. If it's picking up more hours, having another job, playing the lottery, whatever you need to do. That it used to be something that I always thought about when it comes to paying bills, but it's like at the end of the day, I'm doing what I love to do. So enough about the cons, now let's talk about the pros. So number one is the prosperous job outlook and job security. Due to our growing population, aging population, due to the shortage of physicians, we are always going to have a job. Our job is going to be in high demand. Second is flexibility of our hours. Like I said, this could go either way, but you have to know what you want and you have to look for that setting, that job setting. If it is a nine to five, if you want your evenings free up, if you want your weekends freed, if you do not want to work holidays, a nine to five might suit you. So you have to look for a job that offers a nine to five versus me. I like my night shift. It works best for my kids. Again, I feel like you have to know 
um, what's best for you and try to look for jobs that offer those hours. Third is competitive pay. Your salary will vary depending on the setting where you work at. So then you can make a nice comfortable living with their salary. So the fourth one, being able to specialize and just having different specialties. I mean, the list is so long. You have endless opportunities to specialize and to find what best fits you when you become a nurse practitioner. So number five is having a challenging but rewarding career. We're caring for patients that have different illnesses that present differently. We're working with so many different people, co-workers, family members. Every day is not going to be the same, but through it all, you're gaining the knowledge, the experience just for growth, wherever you end up specializing in. It's challenging, but at the end of the day, it's rewarding. Sometimes when I'm leaving a hospital, I actually talk to myself and I'm just like, thank you, Lord. I saved that life or thank you, Lord. I was able to get that patient out of AFib, RVR. Like, thank you, Lord. We were able to get that Foley in and decompress that bladder or we were able to find that obstruction, get that NG in. A patient who just got out of surgery and having 10 out of 10 pain. Thank you, Lord. I'm able, I was able to help. Um, resolve or decrease that patient's pain through the challenges or gaining the experience or gaining the knowledge just to be a better nurse practitioner. So next is growing in telehealth. Depending on who you are, you might enjoy and love telehealth. I'm more of a hands-on, I have to see it, I have to hear it, I have to feel it for myself. If that's something you like to do, telehealth is growing for nurse practitioners. Number seven is travel opportunities. She precepted a nurse practitioner and she had actually traveled to New Mexico for her first assignment. She ended up staying there for almost two years, I believe, practicing in New Mexico as a travel NP and she loved it. And she also worked with hospital medicine. So that's pretty cool. So number eight is the longevity of the career. Many careers are becoming a thing of the past just due to our new technology and like AI. As a nurse practitioner, we play a key part in healthcare and we are ultimately irreplaceable. Number nine is employer tuition program as well as loan re repayment. So just due to the higher demand, if you do hold your bachelor of science of nursing and practicing as a registered nurse, some Employers might pay for you to go back to NP school, but you know if they if they do pay for you to go back to NP NP school, you probably are signing a contract to work for that facility as a nurse practitioner once you complete your schooling. But I mean that guarantees you a job. If they pay for you to go back to school and then you're guaranteed a job for at least one to two years. That's amazing. That's a pro. And at the same time, there's some companies that actually pay for your student loan. I know for sure the VA um, pays back your student loan again if you dedicate one to two years. I'm not sure how many years. But if you dedicate years working for that company or the VA, they do pay back your student loans or pay for you to go back to school. So that's a wonderful opportunity. So, last but not least, number 10, we have a respectful and trusted profession. We focus on the health and well-being of the whole patient. This job requires a great deal of compassion and knowledge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so those are the pros and cons of becoming a nurse practitioner. You have to see what best suits you, what cons outweigh the pros and vice versa. And I I'm hoping that everyone becomes a nurse practitioner. So let me end this video with a Bible verse. Today we are on Jeremiah 10 verse 23. Oh Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man who walks to direct his steps. We are spiritual beings that, that are tied to a creator, the creator being God or your higher power, right? Without the direction that only God can give, man wanders helplessly. Before we even get to this, the pros and cons, and before we even discuss of becoming a nurse practitioner, you have to figure out why are you here? What is your purpose? You have to find your reason, your why. Why are you here? How are you able to give back? And what stands out the most is without the direction that only God can give, man wanders helplessly. So we don't want to wander helplessly. We want to live life productively, live life for a reason, and live life in true happiness and peace and you have to seek the Lord to find out what it is and why it is that you are here on this earth. I remember my mom always used to tell me, I used to sit at a table, at our dining room table when I was young, maybe four or five, six years old, and I'll have my stuffed animals 
um, at a table lined up and I will pretend to be a nurse and care for them. I feel like this is truly my calling to be here as a nurse practitioner at the same time to share my experience experience with you all and for those of you who are on the path of becoming a nurse practitioner I hope I'm helping you and again please leave in the comments any questions that you may have or anything that we, you would like for me to discuss so I will conclude this video I hope you guys are all doing well God bless you and see you in the next video